In my mid-twenties, I considered equality to be a rational concept, devised by people who maybe today you'd call humanists, who wanted to achieve greater social parity, this being regarded as a fundamental characteristic of an enlightened society. Fair enough. But as time passed, and I learned more about the veiled policies of global governance, I realised something wasn't quite right. I also regularly observed that the banner of equality was being waved sort of most vigorously of all by the very stupidest of politicians and activists and educators and celebrities. People of low character and quite ignorant of the real ways of the world. After years of contemplating and road testing the nature of equality, I, for myself, have come to the conclusion that it does not exist. I see no evidence for a state of equalness anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the natural kingdoms of animal, mineral, vegetable. Nor do I see it demonstrated in the deeds or character of friends, family, colleagues, allies. No one. I cannot find it in art, literature, music, science, engineering, war, spirituality, philosophy. I can't find it anywhere. In fact, I see the very opposite everywhere. Natural unequalness. It is very clear that the contemporary ideology of equalness is being used to acclimatise people to the doctrines of collectivism. Collectivism really is just giving the group priority over the individual. The political philosophy of centralised social and economic control. Centralised power structures deciding what's best for everyone else. And from the mid to late 1800s, collectivist philosophy, the fake ideologies of equality, have been slowly introduced into our education systems, to a point where now all mainstream schools forcefully diminish individualism and promote collectivism. Everyone conditioned to favour group uniformity over individual distinction. When I listen to the dangerous absurdities that are being instilled in young minds in school and college, I get angry, really fucking angry. Hearing of the vile nonsense being taught in most elementary schools, most high schools, most colleges, and I mean 90 plus percent most, I am amazed how the creep of collectivism has come upon us. Today, to dare to suggest that something is superior or inferior risks social exclusion or jail. For me, there are lots of things that don't exist. Equality, racism, hate speech, privilege. And then branching out from these things are all the imperial control words that are embedded now in the media. Words like discrimination, diversity, hate speech, profiling, bias, prejudice, microaggression, restorative justice, civil rights. All bad things masquerading as good things. Trojan horses. A poison hiding in the vaccination. And ironically, collectivism is a cult of selfishness. A cult for egocentric, self-absorbed people who cannot imagine that other people think, feel, and live in different ways. They want to impose their personal choices on everyone else. Persuade everyone that their way is the only way. You can see it in the different attitudes to everyday occurrences in life. For example, if an individualist is a vegetarian, he doesn't eat meat. If a collectivist is a vegetarian, he wants all meat products banned for everyone. 
If an individualist is a non-believer, he doesn't go to church. If a collectivist is a non-believer, he wants all mention of God and religion silenced. If an individualist is homosexual, he just calmly leads his life. If a collectivist is homosexual, he demands legislated respect. If an individualist winds up homeless on the street, he thinks about how to better his situation. If a collectivist winds up on the street, he wonders who is going to take care of him. If an individualist doesn't like guns, he doesn't buy one. If a collectivist doesn't like guns, he wants all guns outlawed. If an individualist decides he needs healthcare, he acquires the resources to make that happen, chooses a job that provides it, shops for the right healthcare for him. If a collectivist decides he needs healthcare, he demands the rest of us pay for his. If an individualist immigrant, like me, comes to a new country, he assimilates to the culture, learns the language and customs, becomes an asset, to society and then lives his life if a collectivist immigrant comes to a new country he ignores the customs demands the country change to suit his old culture contributes nothing and then applies for government aid in the end an excellent community can only be composed of excellent individuals if someone has not learned the truth and art of their own individual life expression, their own high conduct, their own balanced composure, then their contribution to a community is zero. They choose not to elevate themselves, not to aspire. They forfeit the singular divine path and choose instead to be a robot. So the collectivist may mechanically join a campaign, join a church, join a political party, a movement, but when their own self-knowledge is weak, when their own expression of individual excellence is undeveloped, then they are nothing but slaves to the leaders of that campaign, that church, that political party, that movement. They serve only as conduits of empire. We, in ourselves, cannot know what is best for anyone else. We can barely know it for ourselves. So, what authority can know whether or not I should speak of certain subject matters? Whether I should discriminate and judge as I see fit? What authority can tell me what is best to eat and drink? What authority can determine whether or not I should carry a weapon? What authority is wise enough to guide my moral life? What authority can I have absolute faith in? Only one. Me. And it is through the ongoing spiritual cultivation of me that I find my pathway to a higher authority. To God. Ultimately, it is his will that flows through us all. Wherever we are from, whatever our creed, whatever our beginnings and circumstances, we are always free to transcend. Always at liberty to embrace the endowment of our individual brilliance and singular distinction. Always free to make ourselves better. To become a beacon of strength. To think, feel and act honestly in all matters. To know the difference between right and wrong. To speak with integrity. To destroy what is false. To uphold what is true. To do these things is to honour life. To not do them 
to swap the individual path for the robot path and to just parrot whatever mainstream imperial culture, religion and scientism dictates is to reject soul inflow, to refuse life, to turn away from the creator. It is our determination, our free and powerful judgment. Go with the program or go your own way.